Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. I speak to the listener for the next few words. If you've discovered this message on what you call social media, this is channel number six of a series of six. And it's planned to be the sixth one. There's five others. You may not find them on the social media that you found this one on, but they exist all together in another place. It is December 22. In the year you have designated 2017, I also give this channel a date stamp. And it's important that you understand, listener, that this is simply a piece of a larger puzzle. I want to continue with you just for a moment. The teaching from the Pleiadian mother, the star mother. It was two days ago when we presented the circle with the five spokes. At that time, I gave you basic elementary information that the children would be given. We told you that the children often decorated the center. <laughs> It's because they had no idea what the sender was. Sometimes they'd even put a light in it. It'd be a candle burning either the oil of the fish or the tree. And they called that the sun. At night it looked like it, especially in the circle that represented the solar system that they were indeed told about. But when they got to be 13, that all went away. And they begin to discover the space. Now we're going to give you some information that we did not give you before. It's not that important. It's just that we want you to visualize this for yourself. And perhaps even remember what the wheel might have looked like the circle on the ground in two dimensions on the ground and what it really might have looked like then slowly we're going to count the spaces the wheel part the circle part was thick fat it represented one third of the distance from the outer to the fulcrum or the middle, one third. The spokes, five of them, represented one third to the middle. And the hub was the remaining third. Now, if you draw this, you will see that the hub really was quite large. So anything that would have been put in the middle of it would have been quite small compared to the space in the hub. Now for those of you who took the time to draw a circle and put five spokes on it, the last channel I gave may have seemed puzzling. You see, there's only five spaces between the spokes. Let's talk about the sixth space. Not before we remind you of the sacred geometry that those of you who understand this will see. You're used to geometry being in straight lines. The five spaces, if you color them in, 
represent a very, very strange kind of triangle. You see, the bottom of the triangle is curved. You have five triangles which are unusual because the bottom is not a straight line. The definition of any curve is infinite numbers of straight lines. There is a message even within the space's shape, five of them. Where is the sixth space? And the answer is the hub. That's number six. Now to a child learning it, they would never see that. They're not taught that. The women are taught that. When the gender teaching has split, the girls begin to study the spaces and they begin to be identified. That which is invisible, as I've said before, that which is difficult to understand. And the reason the women get it is because they're going to need it to teach the sacredness that they're going to hold of advancement of a relationship to the center hub. Even the children are taught that the center is God. The great central sun is God. And that the great circle, that place around it, is life. It's their life. And from the beginning, they see something. First of all, it touches all the spokes. And all the spokes touch the middle. They also see that there is no beginning or ending of life. Therefore, no matter how long they study it, they always see the same thing. It never ends. Eventually, the teaching, even of that which is of the circumference, even that which is of life, is so sacred. And it says this, no beginning, no end to the essence of you. I want to talk about, yet again, the sixth space, the hub. The hub is beginning to show itself. Those spokes, they go both ways. And again, you have the teaching that there is no directionality on any of the spokes. You see, there's no proprietariness. They all connect to the center, and the center connects to the outside. Remove one, and the system is weak. So the hub is not the end all. The hub is not the power center. It is simply the center. Advanced teaching says that all the wheel is connected in such a way that it is one. That the spokes, the outside and the center all vibrate at the same level. Therefore, all things are the center. There is then also a teaching that in the middle of each spoke, there is a separation. Those who would make the wheel out of wood would create different kinds of wood for the spokes so that they would change color in the middle. And the advanced teaching began to color in the wheel. And the reason why there was a separation in the middle of each spoke, a name for it duality and free choice this is what would then separate instead of bring together the outside and the inside in both directions basic teaching began that the human beings even with the circle of life would have to cross the colors of wood, the separation between the spokes. It had to be breached. There was something there that was not then given to them 
by God. It was something they had to do. Belief. Free choice. There was even an exercise where they would start coloring in the spokes fully instead of two colors. And in graduation, they would have the spokes all one color. Some of you will understand this, some of you will not. Meaning that they had a full connection both directions with the hub and the outside. They were one with everything. Now, where are you? Where are you in this system of teaching? So profound is it in the symbolism of it. Even in the gematria. The gematria is that a system in the Hebrew language which hides in its own sacred geometry. Gamatria is what it's called. The Hebrew system itself has some of the seeds of the sacred geometry of the wheel. There were even prophets that were Israelites that saw the wheel in the sky. Ezekiel saw two, one within the other. This teaching in Lemuria went to all cultures. It went to some of the most basic belief systems on the planet. Where are you? Can you envision something as simple as this kind of teaching and as complex as what are you going to do next with your life? Every once in a while we would give readings in the audience. Three of you right now here sitting in front of me are in a certain state of depression. I know your name. I'll say it again. Not the one you were born with. Dear one, I know you. And I want to tell you something. You're waiting for something to clear. To get out of that hole that you've dug for yourself that is so black and so dark. And I want to give you something. I want to give you some information right now. From the other side of the veil, I know your name and we need your light. You are a light worker and that's the reason you're here. And you thought perhaps by now it would clear after three days and perhaps it has not. Let it clear right now. I want to take your hand and pull you out of the hole right now. I want you to see light and feel joy. I want you to see the chills and feel the chills you haven't felt perhaps in weeks as you've been in this awful, ugly hole. I know you. I know your name. And it's time for you to come out. We need your light. Do you hear this? Need your light. And slowly as you climb out of it, you will then have with free choice revelation of who you are. You may even start to remember the childhood where you giggled a lot or you, you ran. Even with the parents who didn't care, I know who's here. You still had that childlike attitude. You understand play. Let's return to that. It is your choice. You can break the color in one of the spokes right now and fill in that color to be complete. Two-way communication from spirit to you and you to spirit. Spirit to you and you to spirit. And one of the reasons you're in depression is because you won't let yourself see the majesty of your real name and who you are. Fourteen of you came here with health issues. There is a beautiful thing in physics that winds itself around your DNA. 
something that has been taught this very day that what the star mothers gave you in birthing and seed planting wasn't an odd number of chromosomes you have 24 and number 24 pair is one of the spaces because it's invisible it is quantum proved that DNA in science when present can change the spin of an electron in a quantum field and only another quantum element can do that that's DNA it is multi-dimensional it is hooked to the source it is ready to go it doesn't have to be activated only your belief has to be activated color in the spokes that's what you're waiting for I don't want to step on any process that says activating DNA but that actually is a misnomer it is activated it is ready it lays there literally ready for you to clue into it attune to it reframe your ideas about it and become what it is and what it always has been 14 of you did you know that everything you may be experiencing right now that you are concerned about that you think may be shortening your life or you're worried about what it is all of the things all of the things and all 14 of you can be reframed and cured and restored with the consciousness of compassion and oneness in your minds without a physician without exotic substances you call drugs you do it yourself this the pattern the template spontaneous remission you've seen it why do you doubt it why do you assign it as a miracle of God why do you never claim it when it happens in a hospital there should be a party songs around the bed congratulating the human for doing something advanced <laughs> and everybody ought to look at it and say there goes me if I want it there goes me if I want it hooked in to what is possible instead of something that happened from beyond whether you deserved it or not you deserve it I know your names I know who you are as you sit here there are others who are continuing to wonder what are they supposed to do my partner had an inkling based upon a question that was asked him during the break and so he looked up something something I was going to channel but he got it in advance he always does that two years ago January we gave an interesting channeling with a very interesting name based upon everything I've been telling you and the channel was called five in a circle <laughs> and it talks about how human beings task themselves what they choose to do and the types of thing they do whether they're introverts in spirit or extroverts in spirit whether they're meditators whether they are tree huggers and it goes around and one of them even is all of the others and it talks about the incredible variety of what humans do with the peace of God inside them and the entire reason they're in a circle is the same teaching of the Lemurian mother and that is this anything you are doing that is sacred and you're feeling your peace of God is accurate for you you don't have to compartmentalize it that's for linear school 
when they look at you and your parents say, well, what are you going to do? You've got to choose something, a thing that you're going to be for the rest of your life. <laughs> this is how you grew up. Adults used to look at you as children. What do you want to do when you grow up? And you had many choices, but only one answer would be acceptable. If you said everything, they would say, okay, little person, we'll see. Well, some of you are doing everything. And I want you to know that that is perhaps one of the most advanced things you could be doing. You want to compartmentalize yourself and say, well, I race around and I do a lot of things and I'm no good to anybody because I'm, I'm fragmented. No, you're not. You're not fragmented. You're a multitasking God. That is advanced. I hope you can reframe some of the ideas that you might have as a human in an old energy that are starting to come out and be seen in a whole different way. New paradigms are here all of you every single one on stage listening and on the seats in here are still filled with residuals of poor self-worth you're crawling out of this hole of the past We've said it before, there are some listening who even fully expect termination of the planet for only one reason, that that's all the information you've ever known. That's what you got when you were born. It's going to end. It has to end. And all of the prophecies and the wars told about it in an older energy because other civilizations had gone through it and you were there too. How does it feel to have gone through the end three or four times? And then to wake up here, what are you going to expect now? The end. And it's a residual that hangs in all of you, all of you, to the point where it touches you every once in a while and says, I wonder if we're going to make it. I wonder if we're going to make it. Things will change on your news and you'll say, we're not going to make it not understanding that the new paradigm is starting to show itself massive change in ways you didn't think including the catalyst that is here which we have called a wild card who is putting a stick in everything you think is cherished and stirring it vigorously that's the only way it's going to change it's got to be stirred up. Some of it's got to be broken. I've said this to you before. This is a repeat. If you want to know what the future is bringing for your country, you are on the cusp of having a failed country. It doesn't usually last much longer than 200 years. Look at the elegance of Rome. Look at the elegance of Egypt. It only lasts so long before human nature takes over and then it gets broken and stuck and then it fails. What you have going on right now is a rewrite, a reframe, a big stick going in all directions. That is the only thing that will let you start again in an elegant way without a stock market crash, without total failure just restructure, just reframing, just picking up pieces and building something different, modern, that works. These are all things, dear ones, that have been carefully given to you because, because the love of God has come from the hub, the middle, the space number six, and is starting to invade <laughs> <laughs> a good word when the wall starts to come down you call the veil and it starts to get thin you get an invasion of light light is more powerful than dark the yin and the yang is no longer 
equal and light starts to come forward and some are scared of it it's not the same as before things are not working as smoothly as before 14, 14 of you are worried about your health because of an old energy thought the things you've been told perhaps some of you have seen those who would tell you what's wrong and they also give you the prognosis based on an old energy model not understanding that light is here and is starting to invade you in a way that is going to help you understand what's next you've got to do this self-worth the last thing it'd be a great time for you to start accepting that what you feel is a paper tiger it's false it no longer is accurate it is a residual that is very strong a residual that hangs with you because of what you've been through old soul think how long you might have been here if you were on this mountain think along how many civilizations how many inappropriate deaths how much sorrow how many times have you been a shaman and it didn't work out how many do you know that are still closet light workers they don't want to come forward because to come out of that particular closet is to die just like before and before and before you are in a new paradigm in a new time where light is going to be seen understood accepted and is going to be part of society and also human nature starting here it will eventually spread across this planet healing societies and continents that have always been sick building new consciousnesses new governments new ways of thinking building inventions that have not been seen before with energy water health even that which is a consciousness that will control by itself human population growth you'll be smart enough to figure it out instead of thinking that it simply runs rampant because humans have no idea why children are being born that is a low energy that's coming feeding the planet no problem that's coming all with wonderful technology coming from light workers and those who start to awaken the three of you we need your light we need your light the 14 of you we need your light that's the reason we want you to stay there's no reason not to it's inappropriate and it's not in your magnificence to feel the way you're feeling the rest of you I want you to see physically the darkness that is a residual that has no place in the magnificence of Lemuria no place here and I want you to see it flushed away flushed away it doesn't belong to you this is a new age it is part of the shift that was prophesied by so many ancients and here it is this is not a cry on thing this is a world thing and it is happening just tune into your news and see it the integrity starts now don't keep that darkness there's no reason for it leave here differently leave this island differently look back on it and remember this homeland the original homeland this the island the mountain of Mu. and so it is